In this module, we are going to talk about the basic navigation pattern that a mobile app follows and compare that to a web app. We're then going to discuss in brief the development lifecycle of a mobile app. Finally, we're going to talk about native and hybrid apps, what they are, how they're different from each other, and their advantages, their disadvantages, etc. A mobile app follows a stack-based navigation. Each page you navigate to is stacked on top of the previous page. And to get to a specific page, you always have to follow a certain set of allowed routes. And on navigating back, these pages are simply popped off the stack. For example, if you wanted to get to a specific page on the Flipkart app on your phone, say the detailed page for an iPhone 7, you would have to either search for an iPhone 7 from the search bar or browse through the categories and find the iPhone 7. At this point, if you close the app and reopen it, you will have to follow the steps from earlier to get to the iPhone 7 page. This does not happen on a web app. You can simply bookmark or note down the address of the page and easily come back to it later. You can try this out on any e-commerce website and mobile app of your liking. It helps to understand and know about this type of navigation while developing mobile apps. And we'll be seeing this in action later in the coming modules. Next, let's talk about the development lifecycle of a mobile app. Basically, there are four major steps. The first one is local development. Local development involves setting up the project and getting started with development. This comes after the ideation and designing phase of the app. Once you have your UI and the features ready, you start by deciding your development environment. You choose your IDE. An IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. An IDE is basically a very powerful text editor with very useful features like a debugger, code completion, source control, simulators, emulators, etc. Uh, we would be talking about simulators and emulators in more detail in the later slides. Of course, there are various instances where you can easily make do with simple text editors. But for mobile application development, using an IDE is certainly recommended. The recommended IDE for Android is Android Studio and that for iOS is Xcode. Android Studio supports Java and a language called Kotlin. Kotlin is basically an open source statically typed programming language that runs on the JVM. It's developed by a team of JetBrains programmers. And as for iOS, we have Objective-C or Swift. Swift is a new language developed by Apple and was open source recently. In this series, we will be using Android Studio and Java to build our Android applications. As for iOS, we will be using Xcode and coding the app in Swift. Now let's move on to testing. One thing is self-explanatory in case of mobile testing. To perform mobile testing, you need a mobile device. This is to see how our product will work and look like on a given device. Once our product is entirely developed, as a part of mobile testing, we need to check if the product is working as expected with all the majorly used devices. To do this kind of check, we need to acquire each device and then check if the application behaves as per expectation. It is definitely very expensive to procure such a large number of mobile devices and carry out testing. The solution to this problem is to use mobile simulators and emulators. These are primarily software programs designed to provide simulation for important features of a smartphone. They are very similar in nature, so sometimes they're used interchangeably. An emulator mimics the mobile device software, hardware, and the operating system, whereas a simulator only mimics the internal behavior of the device and not the hardware. Emulators and simulators have a few disadvantages. They cannot mimic the mobile device battery, they cannot mimic the mobile device's camera. It is also very difficult to mimic interruptions like incoming calls or SMSs. Also, it does not provide a very realistic simulation on device memory usage. But on the whole, emulators and simulators are very helpful while developing a mobile application. As I had mentioned earlier, IDEs come with emulators and simulators. Android Studio provides an emulator while Xcode provides a simulator. Deploying and publishing your app to the Google Play or the Apple Store is a pretty straightforward and simple process. We just need to get an account in the respective store, write a short description for the app, upload a few screenshots, and then finally upload the APK or the IPA file. 
We will talk about this in more detail in the coming modules. Finally, updates. There are multiple reasons as to why we would want to update our app. The most common one is to add new features, like a new level to a game or something based on the feedback received on the app. There can also be scenarios where a certain bug has come up which was missed or not encountered during testing. In this case, an update with the fix needs to be released as soon as possible. How we release updates are also quite similar to deploying the app on the store, minus the bit where you need to create an account. Deploying updates will also be accounted for in, the, in more detail in the coming modules. Let's now move on to native and hybrid apps. A native app is basically an app developed specifically for a mobile operating system. In this series, we will be building native apps. A hybrid app, on the other hand, is coded using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They are then packaged to run on mobile devices with the help of a native wrapper. Softwares like PhoneGap do this. Native and hybrid apps have their respective advantages and disadvantages. While developing a native app, the Android or the iOS SDKs provide native elements to be used easily in the app. These include status bars, buttons, etc. Also, these apps will then look very familiar and will provide the user with a very intuitive user experience, since they look and feel very similar to the inbuilt apps on the user's phone, like the messaging app, the camera, or the phone app. Hybrid apps, on the other hand, don't provide the same look and feel as native apps, and hence the user will have a certain learning curve to use your app. The major advantage that a hybrid app provides over a native one is the speed and cost of development. You are essentially maintaining one code base for multiple apps and can quickly develop and release your apps unlike native ones where you have to maintain different code bases for different apps and each change needs to be reflected individually on each code base. Native apps also have the advantage of providing easy access and full support for the device hardware and software. This includes things like GPS, accelerometer, etc. This is maintained and supported officially, whereas in hybrid apps, this is not provided to you. And you have to rely on external plugins or write your own plugins to access these features. Native apps also have better performance and thus provide a better user experience. With this, we come to the end of this module. You should now have a better understanding of the mobile application ecosystem, understand what native and hybrid apps are, and know of their differences. In the coming modules, we will be getting into deeper details about the Android and iOS ecosystem, and finally develop and deploy an iOS and Android app to the app and Google Play Store respectively.